Inflation just hit a 30-year high. According to the Federal Reserve, inflation is growing at its fastest rate since 1991. We saw inflation grow last quarter at a pace of around 4.4%. That is the biggest spike in inflation since 1991. And in the report, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell admitted that inflation is currently rising faster than even he would have guessed. This is of course headline inflation, which includes food and energy, but the Federal Reserve has a preferred gauge, which is called core inflation. Core inflation rose at a rate of around 3.6% over the last 12 months, but no matter which inflation gauge you look at, inflation is rising at its fastest rate in over 30 years. So today I wanna go into this new Federal Reserve's report on inflation and also take a deep dive into inflation itself. How long is inflation at this level going to last? And what can we expect in 2022? So be sure to stick around till the very end of this video to learn everything you need to know about inflation and what might be coming next. But before we break all of this down, my name is Nate from Minority Mindset News, and if you like this video, make sure to smash that thumbs up button below and hit that little notification bell too. That way YouTube shows our videos to way more money minds around the world. We can keep making videos just like this one. In short, inflation is the steady rise in the price of goods and services over time. It is the reason why the price of almost everything has increased since the time you were born. This means that what you buy at the store and what you order online is going to go up in price every single year. Now, we have seen some times where inflation actually went down and, for the most part, things in our economy started to get cheaper. This is definitely not the norm, though. More often than not, the price of things goes up over time and it's usually a two to 3% increase every single year. This is what's known as inflation. And it's the reason why your grandparents could go to the movies, get a pop and a popcorn for around two to three bucks, 50 or 60 years ago. But now that same movie ticket, pop, and popcorn might end up costing you around 30 to $40. And our inflation problem today is twofold. On one hand, you have a supply chain crisis that is driving up the price of most goods and services, and you also have a labor shortage that's connected to that supply chain crisis. On the other hand though, you have some serious money printing going on by the Federal Reserve and federal government. Let's break down the serious money printing first. Back in March of 2020, the world was essentially put on hold. Nobody could work because of the pandemic and nobody was getting a paycheck. This meant that there was not as much money circulating throughout our economy and a lot of people were just struggling to make ends meet. So that put the federal government and the Federal Reserve in a really tight situation. On one hand, they could offer trillions of dollars in stimulus to US citizens or they could let a lot of these corporations and people fail. The fact of the matter is a ton of corporations and people were not financially prepared for their jobs to basically just go away. So say what you will about the Federal Reserve's decision to print trillions of dollars, but at the end of the day, the Federal Reserve ended up printing trillions of dollars to just keep the economy afloat. So what exactly did this mean? Well, it meant immediately that people would have the means to pay their bills, buy food, and do anything else that they needed. But on the other hand, it began devaluing our currency. Essentially how inflation works is the more money that you have in circulation, the less those individual dollars are worth. Let me give you an example. If there were only $100 in circulation throughout the entire United States and you had $1, then you would hold 1% of all of the wealth. And this can work if nothing ever changes. I mean, if everything stays exactly the same, $100 and your $1 will take you to the same places pretty much forever. You can always buy the same amount of things as long as nothing changes. But if the Federal Reserve decides that, well, we need 100 more dollars, so now there's $200 circulating throughout the United States, well, now your $1 is not worth the same as it was before. Instead, you'll need $2 to have the same value. Now imagine this on a scale of trillions of trillions of dollars. This is basically what the Federal Reserve did when it decided to print 
trillions of dollars in stimulus. This was stimulus in the form of direct checks to Americans and extra unemployment insurance. Remember when everything shut down back in March of 2020, no one was making money, at least the vast majority of Americans. So that meant we had millions upon millions of people go on unemployment. Nobody was really sure what was going to happen next, so the federal government decided to add extra money to the unemployment programs throughout the country. So in addition to the unemployment benefits people would receive from their state, they would also get unemployment benefits from the federal government. The federal government took this one step further. They realized that if people weren't making money, and they probably weren't going to be able to pay their loans either. So they stepped in and put an immediate pause on the federal student loan program, which meant that you did not have to pay your federal student loans for an extended period of time. In fact, if you have federal student loans, you don't have to make a single payment on them until the end of January 2022. In addition, a mortgage moratorium program was introduced and people didn't have to pay their mortgage if they weren't financially able either. So you have millions of Americans receiving money from the federal government without doing any work and actually saving money because they don't have a few required payments anymore. A lot of Americans saved this extra cash. They put a ton of money into savings and really built an emergency fund. A lot of Americans invested this money. This is one of the reasons why we saw the stock market explode in 2020 and 2021 with record highs for most of our major indexes. But the vast majority of Americans went out and spent this money. In a capitalistic society, this is what helps your economy grow. As you have more money, if it's circulating throughout the economy faster, that means more people have more money. If people aren't buying things, then the economy can't grow. So the Federal Reserve is almost hoping that people go out and spend a lot of this money. And like I said, a lot of them did. After the first stimulus check dropped in just about a week, 50% of all of that money was already spent by consumers. That leads us to our second inflation problem, the supply chain and labor crisis. Remember, the world shut down back in March of 2020. Not only did that mean people weren't making money, that meant that companies weren't making products. This went on for several months, and even the industries that could make products were doing so at a much slower rate. People had to socially distance and there wasn't as many workers that could fill those needs. So as you can probably imagine, things got pretty backed up. So backed up that even today, companies are struggling to create the output that meets consumer demand. We saw toilet paper pretty much go through the roof because millions of people wanted to buy it. I still don't really know why, but millions of people wanted to buy it and the price went way up. We also saw consumer electronics go up because a lot of people were starting to work from home. They needed electronics and they needed computers. And a lot of kids could not go to school in person, so they needed laptops. Not everything went straight to the moon, though. We saw the travel industry take a huge hit. Since everything was closed, a lot of people weren't going around the country, or the world for that matter, and traveling. That meant that the hotel and airplane industry almost crashed. And in a lot of cases, the federal government had to step in and supply some bailouts for them as well. We also saw gas prices immediately tank because nobody was driving their cars anymore. You weren't traveling, you weren't going to work, and you were not taking your kids to school anymore. So everybody was staying home and nobody was spending money on gas. But now we're seeing everything go way back up. Like I said before, headline inflation increased by around 4.4% back in September and last quarter. One of the main reasons for this is because as people were stuck inside, as people were getting money from the federal government for basically doing nothing, they went out and spent way more than they needed. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars for the average American just in unemployment and stimulus checks. This means that they had extra income to go out and buy more things. As they bought more things, companies had to produce more goods, but they can't just produce those goods for free. They have to go out and hire more workers, workers to create, deliver, and actually make the products. And they have to buy more storage facility for the new products that they're making. And delivery overseas and just throughout the United States is going to cost you more now. Those costs are trickling down to the consumer, which is what inflation is all about. As companies will trickle those costs down, the price of things goes up. 
consumer spending is also going to have to rise. And we saw that happen in September of 2021. Looking back at this new Federal Reserve report, we also saw personal income begin to drop too. That leads us into our third pillar, the labor shortage. When the federal government was giving out stimulus checks, a lot of people invested that money, a lot of people spent that money, but there was a lot of people that also saved that money. What were they saving for? Well, they were saving to be able to quit their jobs. Millions of Americans found out during the 2020 and 2021 pandemic that they hated their job. They hated the company that they worked for and they didn't wanna just work for a paycheck anymore. They wanted to work for something that they actually believe in and love. The only problem is millions of Americans could not afford to just quit their job before. If you were living paycheck to paycheck and you didn't have any money to pay your bills, you had to stay in your job. But now people have the means to stay away from work for a little while and actually find a job that suits them. That means a lot for employers because they're no longer in control. If people don't want a job, they won't take it. Before, employers had hundreds of applicants. Now they might still have a ton of applicants, but they have to work with the applicants to give them things that they actually want. Things like better pay and better benefits. This has led to employment costs rising at their fastest rate in 19 years. Companies have to pay their people more and not just salaries or wages they have to pay better insurance as well. And they have to offer better working conditions too, cleaner working environments because of the pandemic. In the Federal Reserve's report though, they also mentioned that saving rates in the United States are beginning to drop. We saw them rise at record rates back in 2020, but now they're starting to go down. The saving rate for September of 2021 was around 7.5% for most Americans. That equated to around $1.35 trillion. That is about a 9.2% decline from August and the lowest number that we've seen since December of 2019. So what exactly does that mean? Well, it means Americans are spending more money. And in order to get this labor shortage solved, something has got to give. We can't have millions of people not working for an extended period of time because eventually they'll run out of money. And we also can't have corporations not giving any new benefits to employees because they too will run out of money. So what exactly does this all mean? What does inflation rising at 4.4% mean? And how much longer is this level of inflation going to last? Well, during the Federal Reserve's report yesterday, Secretary Janet Yellen had this to say, year over year inflation remains high and will for some time simply because of what's already happened in the first months of the year. She also added, but monthly rates I believe will come down in the second half of 2022. I think we'll see levels return to normal around 2%. The labor shortage and supply chain issues will eventually solve themselves. People will either run out of money and have to find a job, or companies will have to hire people and give them what they want. For the supply chain crisis, eventually supply and demand will have to reach an equilibrium. That means companies will no longer have to be overproducing or underproducing goods. They will be making the exact amount consumers are looking for. Prices will most likely continue to rise until then, but once the market reaches an equilibrium, we should see prices stop rising at such a dramatic rate. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's comments are pretty much on par with Jerome Powell's, the chair of the Federal Reserve. For Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve, inflation is a bit high right now, but in their opinion, inflation should return to a normal rate by 2023, which is around the same time that the Federal Reserve will increase its benchmark interest rates and stop a lot of its bond buying programs. And money printing. Right now, most of our inflation problems are being caused by our supply chain and labor crisis. Companies have to pay more, they're trickling those prices down to the consumer. But we haven't quite felt the full effects of this Federal Reserve and federal government money printing yet. The effects of the money printing won't be felt by most Americans for a long time. And how big those effects will be all depends on what the Federal Reserve does with our money and money printing over the next year and a half. And what they do is all going to depend on our economy. If our economy continues to improve and goes up at record rates, well, the Federal Reserve might not have to step in and provide that stimulus. But if things start to go down again and we reach a new low for the recession, well, the Federal Reserve might need to pump extra money into the economy to bring things back up and inflate them, whether it's necessary or completely artificial. So basically, 
All eyes are on the economy right now. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about inflation? Do you think that Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell's comments on inflation are accurate? Will inflation drop by sometime next year? Or do you think that we're going to continue to see record high inflation throughout 2022 and 2023? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's Business of Financial News Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Keep hustling money minds and I'll see you all in the next one.